I don't often like to talk in absolutes, but I think the new MacBook Pro is one of the best computers I've ever used. It really does feel like the next gen of laptops, and that might seem like somewhat of a strange statement to make at the start of this video, but I really mean it. It's a huge return to form from Apple, and over the last few weeks of using it, I've grown to really love it. So after the computer pretty much blew away my expectations, the decision to return it came down to a number of things rather than something clear cut. And I'll do my best to explain that in this video. So if you do enjoy aesthetic tech content, be sure to subscribe. YouTube loves to keep reminding me that only 10% of you are, so come and join the community. Anyway, let's get right into it. Okay, so I picked the base model MacBook Pro 14. So that's the M1 Pro with the eight core CPU, the 14 core GPU, the 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gig of storage. And I explained this in my previous video, which is worth watching, so I'll link it below. But the idea was to test this base model and to see if it could keep up with everything that I wanted it to do. And I really wanted to put my I need more mindset to the test. My main goal for this MacBook though was to solve the strange PC Mac limbo I'm currently in. I've actually been on the fence for going all in on Apple for quite a long time now, but until these new MacBooks came out, they never truly had a computer that I wanted that ticked all the boxes. There was always some compromise that I didn't want. And to complicate matters, I've also been a long time PC user and builder. Making a custom PC is a lot of fun and I rebuilt my setup recently. I upgraded to a mini ITX Ryzen 7 5800X build, which I've been super happy with. And once graphics cards return to normal pricing, whenever that is, this was supposed to be my PC end game with my intention being to run it into the ground or to upgrade it as and when and to run my MacBook Pro 16 from 2019 as my day-to-day -day laptop. You see, everything I do is slowly but surely dragging me over to the Mac. Creating content in a broad sense is my job, whether it's freelance photography and video work, recording podcasts or making YouTube videos here, the Mac really does suit all of those workflows nicely. And on top of that, I've stopped using Android phones completely. AirPods have been my headphones of choice for a few years now. I love working on iPads when I can. All the software I use for my freelance and YouTube work is either cross-platform or Mac only. And I've stopped playing games altogether on my PC, which might be the final nail in that coffin. While it's something that I used to love, I've got a PS5, Xbox and Switch to scratch that itch. And I've never been a competitive gamer, so sofa and controller in hand has always been my go-to experience. Plus, most of my friends are console based anyway. So that's where I'm hoping this new MacBook would come in, a new tool to replace both my PC and my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro, all while testing out the base model for my creative workflows. I'll straight up say it, I don't like looking at benchmarks. Sure, they're useful for hard numbers and super specific tasks and workflows, but I find they don't really show off real world day-to-day -day usage, and that's one of the reasons I went for the base model. I wanted to see myself in a real genuine use case if it was going to be enough. And despite its lower specs to the others, it quickly became apparent that on a fundamental level at least, this is absolutely everything I could ever want in a laptop. The 120 Hz mini LED screen is stunning and a joy to edit photos and videos on. The battery life is otherworldly good. The M1 Pro chip is so fast and it's been a really powerful example of how good the ARM architecture is. And the build quality down to the keyboard and port selection is basically perfect. I said in my last video that this feels more like a new iPhone than it does a computer and I stand by that. Everything feels so snappy in the same way a brand new phone or iPad does and it's a refreshing experience to have on a PC. And for my day-to-day -day computing tasks like browsing the web, emailing, making use of the Adobe suite for photo editing, design work, and everything bar video export times in Premiere Pro have all been utterly excellent. I'm totally sold on it. Even one of my biggest concerns, the 16 gigabytes of RAM was handled well. I was genuinely concerned that 16 gigabytes wasn't going to be enough to cut it, but it did. I'm not sure if Macs are just better at RAM management, or maybe I just don't need more than 16 gig of it right now, but I never came across any RAM based issues, even with multiple creative apps open, which was so nice to see. Oh, and I really do think the new 14 inch screen size is perfect. 
I've been using the 16 inch for the past year and I do love it, but it's quite hefty and always weighs me down in a backpack, whereas this 14 inch model is lighter and you're still getting a decent screen size. It's subjective of course, but it's the best of both worlds in my eyes and I don't miss the 16 inch screen size one bit. All that good stuff aside though, I did encounter one issue. It kind of died on me. I was in the middle of editing my last video on this computer and it was going well, but while I was busy editing away, I noticed it wasn't allowing me to preview files by pressing spacebar, which is something I do all the time on macOS. So I decided to reset the Mac and then poof, I had nothing but recovery screens and no way back into the computer. I wrestled with this for a moment thinking maybe it's just having a momentary blip, but after a few more restarts, I knew I'd lost everything. Luckily, I had the footage backed up, but I had lost the Premiere profile and the progress I had made on the video, which was a real shame. I ended up getting on the phone to Apple and credit where credit is due, they sorted me out within minutes. The person on the phone really knew their stuff and ran me through exactly what to do to get myself back up and running. They also suggested that the bug was with OSX Monterey and not hardware based, which was a relief to hear. So yeah, this wasn't particularly nice to happen, but I was lucky enough to not lose too much stuff but it didn't instill a good sense of confidence for Mac OS X Monterey for me at least, so I might hold off a little longer updating my 16 inch to that software. Overall though, that's not the reason I decided to return this Mac. And look, I'm really happy to admit it may have been a little naive of me to think the base model was going to be enough, because over the time I've been using it, there's one thing that's really bugged me more than anything else storage. I've used this MacBook as my main machine since I picked it up and I'm already getting low on internal storage. And yes, obviously you can buy external SSDs. I actually use a bunch myself, but if this is to be my main computer, I'm going to need more than 512 gig of space. I like to keep the last couple of videos locally on my computer as I often refer back to them or I make use of some of the B-roll that I didn't use. And a video project for me can range anywhere between 60 to 100 gigabytes and sometimes more. So when I have a couple of them hanging around, that's a lot of space gone already. Another concern for me moving forward is the 16 gigabytes of RAM. A lot of apps that I use right now suggest 16 gigabytes as a minimum or it's recommended. So for now, that's fine and it has been fine. I've yet to run into any situation or bottleneck thanks to the RAM, but that doesn't mean I won't run into that in the future. And if I do want this to be my main computer for the next four to five years, I think having some headroom there is potentially a smart move. I also want to do some more research into the M1 Pro versus the M1 Max chip for Premiere Pro performance, as there seems to be quite large differences there too, at least at the moment. As amazing as the performance has been on the timeline in there, I found the export times were so high compared to my 16 inch MacBook Pro, and they weren't even close to my PC. So that's something I'd like to sort before making any decisions. Of course, I'll make another video when I pick up a different model, so if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that one. I do want to be totally clear though, if you can live with the 512 gig of storage and edit in something like Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve for video, or if this is just going to be your first creative machine, it's a wonderful place to be. This entry level MacBook Pro is an utterly amazing computer and don't let those lower core counts fool you. This is plenty to do some really amazing work on. So while I box up this Mac for return, it has convinced me that this is going to be the future of computing for me. I'm going to take a little more time and find out the perfect spec for what I do. Hopefully Premiere Pro might have some updates for the M1 Pro and Max chips by then, or if I get proficient enough in Final Cut to make the switch. Then after all that time, it may well be the final nail in the coffin for me and PC use. So that rounds up this video. If you're using one of the new Macs, let me know in the comments below how you're getting on with it. I always love hearing what you have to say. Pop a like on the way up too, that would be massive, and I will see you all in the next one.